get ready because it's so unbelievable. It's going to seem fake, but I promise you it's not. Grace will vouch for me. It depends if you tell it right. There is no way not to tell this right. Short term 12, this is Grace. Remember, you're not their parent, you're not their therapist. You are here to create a safe environment, and that's it. Got it. I'm not Grace, and I can relate to her struggle. I can relate to the bigger questions that are involved with it, but the specifics I haven't experienced. Um, and I don't know anybody like her. Um, but somehow, she was very clear to me from, from the very, within 10 pages. It's not just telling a story about a 20-something-year-old girl. It's telling a story about a human being. Um, and that, that, is, that feels right. All of the the scenes in the movie and all of the characters in the movie all serve one purpose, which is to see how Grace reacts to them. Either pulling Grace away from, from her belief that she can do this, by this meaning like be a good parent, just be a good person, love herself. It's either, the scenes are either tearing that away from her or it's making her believe that she can. We have a new member of our community. She's been in and out of group homes with dangerous behavior. I told her father we take good care of her. I take good care of everyone. The struggle for Grace um, through much of the film is, is not her not wanting to recognize things within herself and wanting to continue to throw herself into saving a child, you know, fixing something else. Just focus on the work, focus on saving somebody else. These are young lives, they can be saved. And I think every time that happens and she throws herself into somebody else, it just turns on her every time. Watching Brie go through the process of Finding grace was something exciting for me. And a lot of it was, you know, happening in her head, um, in, in, her, in her room, through the, the huge amounts of just information that she consumed before getting on set. She was able to digest all of that and interpret it in a very smart way, and, and uh, it made my job really easy. I'm just playing the longest game of tennis. There's no, there's not really, like you do as best you can to prepare and be a good tennis player, but then the second it starts, the scene starts, the second the day the movie starts, there's no time for anything other than just returning the ball as efficiently and quickly as possible and hoping that it ends up between the lines, but there's, there's nothing else to be done. It's moving at such a extreme pace and especially something like short term that is a very emotionally dense and subtle and complex film and was a low budget so we did it all in 20 days it's it's a it's a marathon and there's nothing else to be done except just return the ball so this is how it's gonna be you got five seconds Don't know The thing that I've always had a hard time with is the formality of acting. That, you know, the actor arrives on set and quiet on set because the actor has arrived and then the slate, you know, goes and then I must act and then the, it ends and then I'm not and then I'm acting and then I'm not. And I don't like it. I don't like the big, like, to-do. Like, don't make a big deal that I'm there. I'm a human being, like, you can do your thing, I'm gonna do my thing. And there was a fluidity that I felt on set that there was not much difference. Part of that was because we're dealing with, with kids and we wanted them to feel comfortable and so we kind of mimicked, the or Destin mimicked the environment. In a lot of ways, their roles as the leaders of, of this place, the, the, the caretakers of these kids continued when, I, we, when the camera wasn't rolling and they became the, the actual real life mentors of these young actors. Um, and it, it was a huge thanks to them for helping me create an environment where the young, sometimes, you know, brand new actors felt, felt safe enough to make mistakes and not feel like someone was going to slap them on the wrist for it. Destin had made the decision that the camera was gonna be on a person the whole time, it was gonna be on Brett, our DP. Um, and so because of that, once again, no formalities. There's no setting the camera up on sticks and staying in a certain frame. We had the freedom to move wherever it was that we wanted to. There was no marks that needed to be hit, so you eliminate, once again, another formality. Those are the things that remind you that 
you're in a movie and you're doing this thing. But when there's this freedom, um, there's an openness to create. And Brett, even though he's sitting there with a the camera in my face, did not feel like he had a camera. He was just another character, I felt like, in the film. Maze, I love you like a brother, but I gotta say that when it come to being discreet, you're a disgrace. I mean, he think we all don't know about him and Grace on the low, undercover, trying to date. <laughs> There were so many moments working there when I said, if I put this in a movie, no one would believe it because it's too dramatic or it's too, you know, it's, it's, it's too much. Tonally, um, that environment is all over the place. You're, you are laughing hysterically one moment at some, somebody's joke and then, you know, a chair flies across the room and boom, like some kid is going off and, and it just turn, becomes the most intense experience ever and then the adrenaline drains and then everybody's crying and it, you know, it can, it, it's a very intense experience and that's something I saw all the time when I was working there. <laughs> But finding the balance of what what still feels authentic in in, in a movie um, and not melodramatic and not you know not overly sentimental was that balance was a big challenge I think for everyone. You got to know the rules of the game you're playing in, and then you and then there's a complete freedom in that. But you got to know what the rules are. So part of the rules in Short Term Twelve are that we are in a foster care facility and there are kids that are at risk and have specific needs. And everything from the way the restraints are, those are handbook, to the way that we can touch a kid, which is one arm and to the side, are all regulated. It's not a jail, it's not a prison, so there isn't an actual locked gate. And so if, if any of the, the youth are smart enough, and a lot of them are, as long as they're not um, in danger of hurting themselves or somebody else, and they can make it out that gate, then there's nothing anyone can do. Once, because once you're outside the gate, then they are—they're just a kid walking on the street, and you can't just go and restrain them or throw them in a car and bring them back. The only thing that you can do is follow them until they're willing to come back. Everyone, sit down, please. I never think, oh, I'm, I'm going to make this to teach somebody something. But I, I always hope that I'm making this to teach myself something. And in, in this case, I, I mean, I, I learned so much. Just the process of, of going through my own experience working there and organizing them in a fictional film and then going through the, the in, intensely collaborative process of telling the story with other wonderful human beings has, um, you know, in, in some ways, uh, it, it has made me, it's made me a more positive person. I think it's a really remarkable and important experience to, um, no matter what, you know, age, shape, size, race, color, whatever you want to call it, to care about all of these people and to realize that as different as everyone is in the movie and as different we all are from the people in that movie, we are exactly the same. And that there is something very important to be learned from each one of them, from the youngest person in the movie to the oldest one in the movie. Everybody in there has a story and it's all been hard and it's also all been loving and beautiful. And um, I think we start to see more of the interconnectedness of us and the importance of it, that we are really, at the end of the day, we are a much bigger family than the ones that we just think we're blood related to. It's 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 big, and it's important, and it can be loving if we if we can if we can kind of forgive and see each other. Here we go.